Welcome everyone to another week of the R Packages Book Club or R4DS. Um, this week we are going over uh, the chapter Other Components. Let me go ahead and share my screen. I will be presenting. Um, here we go. And the bills are also playing. Um, this week, it was a short chapter, um, chapter eight, um, other components. Um, so this goes over what where we've already been, um, what we've gone through already um, throughout the book, um, various states of a package um, from source to in memory. Um, that was something that was new to me. Um, focusing on workflow and and some of the other stuff that we've learned along the way. Um, and then this is kind of where we're going. This is the path uh, for the next few weeks. Um, I, th I think this is the last section or excuse me, I think this is the last um, chapter of this section, and then we'll get into um, the package metadata, um, which involves description and namespace uh, dependencies um, and lic licensing. Um, so the learning objectives for today and um, this is a, this was a quick chapter, so um, hopefully y'all came here with uh, some discussion points as well. Um, but get acquainted with some of the other parts of uh, the R package. Um, so some of the other directories. Um, we, we've gone over um, a few of them in, in the R package and uh, the source directory. Um, that's a source and header files for compiled code. Um, I believe the first edition of this book went further into the this, this source folder, um, but they changed things up just because there's so much um that you could have another book on this topic um so that yeah that that's where you put like c or c++ code um and here's a couple packages that interact with uh c through r um or c++ i should say um, I think this RCPP is, um, I guess that, that's like one of the more legacy um, packages for interacting with C++. Um, quite a few packages uh, require RCPP. Um, I actually just updated my our version and our studio um and i was having issues with um getting rcpp installed um so that was that was fun figuring out like my uh bash profile and all these other things that i don't think helped solve it, but then I changed, um, I think I changed my R environment path. So I think that helped fix it. Um, if you're curious, I think I put something in the R for DS uh, help ge R generals channel for that. Um, the other C++ um, package to interact with it is the CPP11 package. Um, and I believe that 
this is what the tidyverse utilizes um, for any C++ um, interaction. Um, yeah, so the motivations are CPP has been a widely successful project. However, there's been a number of issues and additional C++ features have arisen. Um, so that, that was some of the motivation behind this, uh, this package. Um, Rebecca says, I know nothing about C, C++. Um, but I saw something on the internet about using Fortran to speed up R code. Uh, is that a niche thing that some devs are doing? Does anybody have a feeling for when these languages are used? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I feel like it's a niche thing. Um, I, I definitely do see other R devs um, take advantage of like interacting with Fortran or or other um, languages to speed up their code. Um, I, yeah. I think there's still some Fortran under R, like mm -hmm. R itself has things written in Fortran. I don't know how common it is for people to write like new things in Fortran anymore. Um, and I know like Rust is the one that is the new hot language that a lot of people are playing with using for speeding things up. Um, I know a teeny tiny bit of C++ I've done. I have like edited other people's C++ code in packages, but I've never written any myself, but it is something that's one of those is on my list. I don't know which one yet, but learning to do those and when when to do those because you know finding something that's slow and will be faster without too much work <laughs> in another language um yeah i i know a little bit both because i was thinking about learning and i was like what should i learn me i want to improve my my speed using r Basically, right. yeah, it, it's most extended the use of C++, but I, I was reading a blog in the Chrome page that says that R was right written in C, so the the performance is better with C. Data table was written in C, the, the fast part. And what's the difference between C and C++? There are a huge difference because C++ is object oriented and C not. Basically, that that was the the difference. And why they say plus plus? If you want to make complex things, it's easier to do it with C++. But you want just to uh, just speed a for loop, C would be better. It's the right better with R. Yeah, I will say the one t time I can think of that I worked with some uh, C++ code in an R package, I was fixing someone else's code because it didn't work for my use case. And I did that and then compared it to something that uh, a coworker wrote just using, R I mean, we were using R, including using um, Stringy, which is this package behind string r that does all you know it, it is c based and our stringy code was a uh, specialized c plus never mind we won't use this like exactly the right thing and still a lot of times just writing more efficient like writing your r code better is a first step to you know like if you're calling some crazy loop and hitting c code underneath that it'll probably be slower than if you just write it more vectorized in R. So um, yeah, the whole C plus CPP 11 thing was interesting. Like there was a whole thing where there was a bug that RCPP was like bringing to light and it only happened um, like a couple versions back 
in R, and so the RCPP people weren't fixing it. They're like, it doesn't, like, it's not a big deal. And the Tidyverse team was like, um, lots of our users have two versions back of R. We support four versions back or whatever they do. And so they wrote a new <laughs> package. At least that was my impli or my perception of what happened. Was they're like, okay, <laughs> if you're not going to make it work for us, we'll do our own. And then now there will be two. So that's um, that's hilarious <laughs> um yeah i um like speaking of fortran too um i think during my package installations i saw that g fortran was like a requirement for one of the packages and i was like oh need to <laughs> figure out what's going on here uh Cool. It looks like we have um, some more links. Thank you, Angel. Uh, definitely check those out. Um, yeah, the the other thing that I thought was funny um, while looking at these resources was um, on this learning more section, uh, welding R and C++. Um, I had forgotten about this. Um, I was actually uh, one of the organizers for this Saturday Columbus event. <laughs> Jim uh, Jim Hesser <laughs> came to uh, talk on C++ and R. Um, so yeah, this slides are there and um, as well as the uh, link to the talk for more info on that. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's definitely a lot more to explore um, with the source um, folder, and I guess it really depends on on what you're trying to do. But um, yeah, there's there's a lot more um, to go from just a little bit that we touch on here. Okay. Um, the uh, the next folder is the inst folder. Um, we already saw this in the data chapter um, with the um, ext data subfolder, um, and we will add um, citation to that as well. Um, and I th yeah, we'll go over that a little more in this uh, in this chapter. Um, some other folders, tools, configure tools and store useful stuff for maintainers. Um, demo is, it's more of a legacy folder. Um, you should use a good readme um, instead and vignettes, um, which we'll cover in uh, chapter 17 later on. Um, okay. Yeah, well, I had some confusion on vignettes, uh, but I guess I'll, I'll learn more, <laughs> uh, once we get there, um, some other folders, uh, exec for executable scripts, um, and uh, they say apparently inst is a preferred location for that instead. And uh, the PO folder, translations for messages, uh, both internal and from the package. Um, I'm not sure uh, if they went into more detail on this. I, I wasn't entirely sure what what this folder was for um there's been a push for people to do more um internationalization but they don't really go into it here um uh our open sci has a whole initiative on it which that po tools i'm pretty sure is um in our open sci package 
okay or at That's, least yeah. being helped out by our open side maybe so is that like um just like helping with like spellings of words or like time zones or things of that nature uh, no like literal translation so like giving help oh in other languages and error messages in other languages oh, um, okay. that kind of thing yeah um because you know r is fairly uh english but it doesn't have to be it's designed to allow you to do that and so i know for example uh the package cli was written with this in mind to be able to um relatively easily sub out um error messages but i haven't done anything with it it's you know like just about everyone else it's like oh i'll I'll do that down the road uh, but thankfully there has been a push because you know obviously the people who uh want it most don't have a lot of power to make it happen and so oh. there's a been a push to kind of make it more um more normal awesome uh yeah Definitely check out um the writing extensions link in the in the chapter um as well as this um this package to help out. Um and today I learned what a uh putu is. Did not uh did not know that. <laughs> right. I forgot. <laughs> or I didn't know what the logo was for. That's funny. All right. You, you want to learn something every day. Um, so, yeah, I think there's like just a few other sections here. Um, okay, yeah, thanks for the link. Uh, installed, build, everything in Inst is copied into the um, top level directory of the installed package. Um, so this has um, the effect of uh, you don't want to name something um, with a name already in use at the top level. Um, so, for instance, uh, inst uh, slash data. Um, and they also said um, there is a difference between um, the development and what the user sees. Um, in development, you see uh, inst slash Bob, for example, and then the users only see um, slash Bob. Um, to avoid trouble, you can use load all or um, path package in the FS package. Um, package citation, this was um, this was kind of interesting to me um, because I guess I wasn't too familiar with it beforehand. Um, so if you have something in the citation file, um, the citation function will grab that and show you how to actually cite the package you're using. Um, without an argument, it just shows you how to cite base R and then um, with a package name, um, it shows you how to cite the package. Um, and use this comes in handy once again, um, helping you create a citation file um, and it places it in the uh, inst folder. Um, I'll go back to the book here um this is what the um citation looks like for for r um and if you do cite package um this is what it might look like um i am i am curious like if if 
other people on the call, um, like what your, um, what your experience is with, uh, citations, um, uh, like, I'm curious, like if you create a shiny package, like what does that look like? Like, how would you, like, is that the same thing as if you're like writing a publication or a paper? Um, I guess, um, that's kind of what I was confused on what that looks like for different, um, different scenarios. I have used citations uh, in my my blog. Not too many, mm -hmm. because it's like, nobody reads that, but in the books, you see a lot of reference. Um, but that's more for papers and is thing to use with latex. So this citation mm -hmm. is not really useful. You are using Microsoft Word is this format is for late as you see for late you see there mm -hmm. yeah that definitely yeah that definitely makes sense um yeah i i haven't done much with citations because i you know i'm not working in academia um mm. or situations where it would be used a lot um but it is like it's neat that that's built down built in i just started playing around like i was calling it for some of the stuff i've written because um you know i haven't done it on purpose and just the default does a pretty good job actually like this is here i didn't do anything to make this um my package cookies and oh yeah that's cool yeah that's what our auto generates so um that's pretty cool um yeah i've i've seen like um other people cite our packages like in their like in their shiny um shiny work um but not quite the same as uh, uh it, it might be similar, but maybe not quite the same as uh paper publication. Cool, thank you. Oh, and yeah, uh it. I guess it creates a template, so you might just have to um, change a few things for that. Oh, I uh, I should put in a pull request uh, for con configuration. <laughs> um, so the the tools um, official use scripts needed at compiled time uh, associated with uh, source. They will not be present in the installed package. Um, so quote unquote, an official use web toolkits spe specification for a web API, um, color palettes, styles, themes. Um, I don't think I've had um, very much experience with, with this one. I'm not sure if others have. Um, I don't have any. Um, I didn't. Don't remember if the chapter gave any examples. Um, but if anyone knows of a package that might use this, can we poke at their source code? Oh, that's a good. That's a good question. Did they say anything? I don't think so. Yeah, they don't. I don't see any examples. Um, I'm not sure if other people have um, um, good GitHub searching skills, but you might be able to search like our that packages and a tools folder, maybe. I don't, maybe. <laughs> um, 
Um, we did a Tidy Tuesday uh, a few weeks ago that might have, it was um, like data uh, about our packages, about CRAN. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if they had, um, if they had anything. Uh, yeah, but um, not not easily, not quickly. Um, oh, but I'm curious. Let's I was see. gonna say I'm willing to um, hand over my screen as well. <laughs> yeah, no luck. Like quickly searching through their paper. Uh, let's see. I'm just gonna do a quick. Uh, Maybe a string I could have it. I know you. Which, right one. which one is that? And string string I. Okay. Are they on? Oh, it does. Oops. Oops. There we go. Um, I don't know what that is. Um, <laughs> Should I click it? <laughs> what the heck is an M4 file? That's a good question. I know because I thought, oh, that package takes a lot to <laughs> to compile. Oh. Sometimes and you you yeah. want to install it. It's a general purpose mark macro processor. Oh, yeah. is that that's what M four is? Yeah. I wonder. Um, uh, it looks like they have both. They have a couple of those files. Yeah. Hmm. So it uh, looks like they're using it, like as intended. I think. Oh, um, versus the unofficial ones in the yeah, in the book. That's interesting. Um. I'm not sure if the arrow package arrow package is on. Um he uses C. Uh, I don't know, yeah. Okay, that it does not have tools, I don't think. No, go to R now. Now R because Oh, go down here. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, me. Yeah, they go to the R folder because there's a meta package and you oh. have the Python code, the, okay. all the languages together in this repo. Cool. You see it below Python, under Python. And, uh, did ah, I come? Okay. Ah, it was freeze. Yeah, you, it had tools and it had bash scripts. Um, I don't know what the S. That um. Oh, uh, this. I think that Gmailer example, Rebecca, is supposed to be that when it builds on your system, it'll give you that warning if you're on an old version of R. I think. Oh, okay. This is. Interesting. Oh, when did they release that? <laughs> if uh, if Jenny Bryan is doing it, then uh, I'm definitely on board with whatever uh, her style is. All oh, right, it was the G calendar that isn't done. Cool. Um, 
Yeah. So definitely. Yeah, definitely keep looking for for uh, examples, but I think those are pretty cool. Nice. Well, I definitely uh, learned something there. Um, yeah, so this this was a quick chapter. Um, there you can stuff a lot of different types of files in um in our package um and that kind of helps guide you where uh where some of those should go um and there's uh like official ways to do it and then um quote unquote unofficial ways uh but yeah any uh any questions or, or comments on, on this chapter? Um, I know it was a fairly short one. No, no. Um, no. It's like those for the more advanced and maybe the most useful one that is for external data we saw before. It was the repeater. That was the one that we used for deep vintages. But the other ones, they were the the real ones, the real ones that mm -hmm. we say, okay. Uh, it's okay that we know that they exist, but maybe we don't need to go much deeper for now. I I have used um inst for uh well like that cookies package. I have um JavaScript that's just in a JS folder in inst and it's the source files. Um, there's a whole system for working if you have, if you have uh, JavaScript within a package. So um, I've actually used that. Uh, that's the one out of all these that I've done anything with. And it's just to, in order to have an extra folder and it's really like, you know, I have, I've been using uh, in slash JS, which means I just have a JS folder, and really that's not super standard standardized. Um, there are a few different ways that people, you know, because you can put whatever folder you want as long as it doesn't conflict, and so um, that one probably should be more standardized. <laughs> and, and it's kind, it's like, it's well, so it's not source because you're not like compiling it, it's just, it's code to literally just load it in as text and run it within Shiny. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've also used Inst as well, um, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure if it's like the official way or unofficial way. <laughs> So what sort of stuff are you popping there? Um, so I took over, um, I took over a package, um, at my, at my work and there were, um, some like tokens that were like put in inst, like in a vault subfolder. Mm. Um, so I'm not sure if that's like the proper way to uh, store some of those things, but that's, uh, yeah, that's where those were when I <laughs> came aboard. Generally, probably not, but if you're keeping it like private within a company, then it's probably not a big deal. But, you know, it's not exactly a secure storage area yeah um yeah cool yeah there's there's probably some like there's yeah no there's definitely some like better secure practices that i could be doing and i'm not sure if we'll um explicitly cover some of those in in this book or not 
Um, but yeah, that's that's good to know. Um, Rebecca, did you have um a question yeah, or a comment? I early? did. Um, since we might have a little extra time today, can we go through the um the examples of things that people put into tools as a catch-all, which um so it also wasn't totally clear to me whether they were recommending against using it just as a catch-all folder of um things that could just be in some any folder that's our build ignored. Um or if that's just fine if that's your use case for it. But I wouldn't even well I don't know what a web <laughs> toolkit is or like why would you have R code that's in line that would be useful for you there or I don't know, is it, and we don't have to talk about it as a tools folder, but just as a catch all, like putting themes and things. That's, I assume that's something that we won't really touch about elsewhere. So, um, yeah, how do you add themes to your package and why would it need to be built in, in a build ignore folder? And I don't know. Yeah. I I don't think they're recommending it, but I think that they probably didn't want to come down too hard <laughs> on it. Um, I think they could have come down harder uh, because, I mean, I don't know, some of it's probably fine, um, but I, I think it's just, it, it is totally a catch-all and, oh, I've got this thing that I use to build the website for my package, so I'll throw it in tools is kind of the idea or okay. it's a thing I reference while I'm building the package. So I throw it in tools. Uh, I think that's mostly what they mean by things like color palette styles and themes that they use that in order to just have that information while they're building the package. And then maybe they'll choose colors from that palette or things like that. Um, and I okay. think I, I'm almost certain that that list was, um, they did some sort of search and okay. were like, how do people use this? And here right. are some of the things we find. We found. Okay. Um, that's how I'm reading it. Okay, so if they didn't come down hard on it, but our understanding is that it's better practice to just be um, in some sort of appropriately named built ignored folder um, but so spec like, okay, arc, why would you need, and what, all right, I don't even know what a web toolkit is, <laughs> um, or R code that's inlined, like why are, all right, fine. So let's, the, yeah. the, the simplest one is the palettes example. So like your palettes that you need for making your vignette look nice for our package down, like those presumably aren't built ignored they need to be incorporated in some way because you're i don't I, I don't think they mean like pellets as code i think they mean like you know a pdf of your company style guide got it that you're okay. going to reference while you're working on your vignettes okay that's what i'm taking that as and that same thing for like specification of a web api that's like documentation that you're using as reference while you're working with that to create for yeah, or something. Um, so I, I am pretty certain. <laughs> yeah, I think that one is probably um, pause. That would be my guess. Is that pause does that? Let's see if I can find this. Um, so the there's the package that um, or a ser uh, like collection of packages for the for AWS, mm -hmm. and it's auto built. Um, but no, because they're auto-built from like above R. So that doesn't have a tools directory. But that would be the idea of if you have, um, if your package is using the API specification to generate code, you would throw the specification in that tools directory and then parse it into your code. Um, that's my guess. Um, so is it serving, a, so it's just serving as a reference for you as a, developer or yes i mean or or like you're putting it through some code to generate some things but as far as the package is concerned okay. is 
it's nothing like the output of it is what you would use and or it could just be purely that you're using it as a reference okay um i'm not sure the r code that's inlined as opposed to imported i haven't i can't parse that um that's fine if it's not important <laughs> to you it's I'm, not I, important to me. I'm just i'm curious why like what is that reference i don't mm. I don't know. Anyway, um, so I guess I think probably what they mean by that is like our co our code that gets copied into other code. I think that's what they mean by inlined as opposed to imported. Like during some process, it all gets copied into the source files, and so you don't need that file anymore. Um, anyway, but yeah, it's catch all of other stuff that people use and like. Uh, I have at least one package where I have, I think I mentioned before that I have our raw kind of equivalent to data raw as just an extra folder that I'm using this way, basically. Mm. But I don't put it in tools. I just made my own folder, um, which I think like if you're just making something to be ignored, I don't, I think not putting it in tools, like putting it somewhere weird is better so that like, people don't think they know what it means <laughs> like because tools has a meaning but if you're that not using it that way yeah so if you're um i don't know maybe especially if you are expect that you're not going to be the only author of a package either currently or in the future do you tend to have a few different documentation adjacent um um, build ignore packages that that were useful to you in the development explaining I don't know do, do you often find yourself throwing something in your package no. but in it or build ignore almost never okay um sometimes I'll have like working files where, that I'm like just experimenting with some things that I'll just throw in tests because it doesn't break anything for them to be in tests um but that's like very temporary and okay. um, probably not a great idea to do it that way. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't regularly have these weird things. And I think if people did regularly have these weird things, there would be a recommended style for them. Um, mm. okay. And so I, the whole tools thing, like I have glossed over this, section several times you know that first paragraph is hey sometimes it's actually useful to have tools that like are run during the installation um but not included in the installed package that's an interesting concept and like that gmailer one looks like a real version or the the um stringy uh stuff that's real real use cases of tools um the Gmailer one in particular, it looks like it's a way to like embed a message into your documentation or something. Um, I'm curious if you could use that logic to deal with things like the base pipe or um, you know things that their their version of R do doesn't use properly. So if you're installing it on an older version of R, have it replace every pipe with the Magritter pipe or something. Um, it's an interesting idea. <laughs> it, <clears throat> it sounds like if we get um, Jenny Bryan for another Q and A, oh. it would yes. be a perfect time to ask. Yes. Um, Stas also commented in the chat. Um, well, the matter of the question is, what does R really? go to at the build stage versus what is being utilized in some other infra infrastructural way in the loaded slash attached package. For example, data slash sysdata uh, dot RDA versus what is a programming convention like inst slash data raw, which is a convention thing. Um, and what is being used to interact with Python, C++, Rust, uh, JavaScript. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it too. 
Yes. And just to clarify, data raw isn't inside of inst generally because you just want it for yourself. So that's at the top level and ignored. Um, hmm. So it, it doesn't go through the copying during hmm. insula installation. It's just purely to log how you created the data um, as a developer. Um, oh, cool. I'll go ahead and uh, stop sharing. Um, does anyone have uh, any further comments or questions? Um, awesome. Uh, well, thank you everyone for uh, coming uh, on this uh, federal holiday. Um, it looks like based on the sign-up sheet, we have uh, we have the next few weeks uh, filled in already. Um, so next week we'll be going over the uh, chapter nine description, um, uh, followed by dependencies. Um, next week we'll have Stas uh, leading the discussion. Cool. Um, yeah, if there aren't any uh, further questions or, or comments, uh, yeah, once again, thank you for coming and uh, yeah, we'll see you all next week. Thank you for leading. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you.